Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. So it's been about um, two years that uh, CELTEC is organizing uh, virtual events and you have been very, uh, a lot of you joining our webinars. Uh, we had a lot of webinars with our partners uh, where you could learn about new products, technologies, innovations and you have been many of you asking also about having some inputs on acoustics uh, this is why today we decided to have a, a first webinar on uh, acoustics and uh, present you some uh, innovation and some some inputs on acoustics as it will be the first webinar today about this we decided to start with uh, some basics if you would have any uh, requirements, suggestions uh, for future webinars, don't hesitate to give us some suggestions. We will surely take them into account for our future webinars. The application we are running in, uh, like automotive, medical, industrial or consumer, any electronic application has more and more requirements on acoustics. And sometimes uh, it can be for some of you a headache or at least be challenging uh, of using acoustics uh, for different reasons. It can be because you're not expert on acoustics, just uh, easy as, like that, or even if you don't have enough time to dedicate to the acoustics, or you have some very specific timeline to respect on your project. Uh, for all those cases, CELTE can help you. We can be here to help you on your acoustic project uh, in several ways, choosing the right driver, helping you to uh, install them and you make all the environment around it, uh, make it sure that it's working fine and is uh, perfectly included into your application um, in, in every step. So this is also thanks to the 30 years of experience, more than 30 years of experience that Celtic has into this domain and into acoustics. So my name is Giulio Di Capua. I'm the general manager of Celtic. Today I'm with Frederic. Hi. He, uh, who is our field application engineer and our acoustic expert. And uh, just a moment. And we will go through today our uh, webinar on acoustic solution integration in challenging designs. Let's have a look at the agenda. I hope you all can see the screen. So today on the agenda, we will uh, talk about speaker and speaker box designs, microphone and microphones modules design, uh, once we will do uh, this, we will go through a product range uh, of uh, all the drivers we can offer you. Also, we will see together the new product introduction. And beyond that, we will go and have some inputs. So, Frederick, what's about uh, speaker and speaker boxes design? Thank you, Giulio. Let's indeed start with um, challenges around speakers and speakers' boxes. As we all know, a speaker is what we call an acoustic dipole, which means that if you do not take care of separating the front side from the back side, you will face the phenomenon which will be the wave from the front withdrawing the wave from the back, resulting in an acoustic short circuit, especially in low frequencies. To do an aside on this, if you want to test many speakers on your own prior to select the correct one uh, for your application, what you need to find on your side is a kind of rigid panel like this one, into which you will have drilled a hole, a circled hole for integrating the speaker, but between in between the speaker and the panel you will need to place uh, something which is the, your best friend when you are an acoustic guy a simple piece of what my stick for doing the setting but going back to challenges around uh, the integration we all need to keep in mind that sometimes um, a speaker can be a strong source for vibrations Indeed, during the integration phase, 
you will need to take care of what we call the mechanical decoupling, not only from the front of the speaker, but also at any other point where the speaker risks to touch the rest of your uh, device. Since you integrate the speaker into something closed, which will be the, the casing of your device, you will need to take care of any leakages into this casing, which may result in an acoustic short circuit, as we just uh, discussed. And also, again, due to the fact that you integrate the speaker uh, into a box, you will inherently change its acoustic performance. Therefore, you need to control this performance to know where you are. Just a few words about front and back volumes. The, the, again, the, the, the fact that you integrate the speaker into a closed box, which changes the performance, and it will especially change its fundamental resonance frequency, but also the damping at, uh, of the sound pressure level around this resonance frequency. Where you cannot integrate uh, the speaker uh, and get the sound directly from its front, uh, but you can only get the sound from the side, for example, like in smartphones, you can sometimes take advantage of designing such a kind of side firing uh, for designing resonator to boost the high frequency response acoustically and without consuming any other resources like processor. If we focus now on the low frequency response, it may be possible that you, you feel your system uh, of lacking um, energy in low frequencies. To acoustic, acoustically work on this, you can work with uh, famous designs like bass reflex or passive radiators, which both rely on the same principle which is the fact that they use a resonating mass to radiate the sound, which is, in the case of a bass reflex, the mass of air particles into a tube, and in the case of a passive radiator, the moving mass of a passive diaphragm. Uh, but if you want to deal with such a kind of design, you need to pay attention to some major points. The first one, of course, is to define the appropriate base alignment, often adjusted from the impedance curve on the, of the speaker, like we, uh, like we see on the bottom left example. But you need to be careful on a too low target uh, for this resonance frequency to extend the base response, which may result in the case of a base reflex system in a too long tube and so not possible to realize into your design. This is, by the way, uh, where passive radiator enters the game in place of uh, base reflex. Still on base reflex, um, that due to the fact that the, 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 the motion of the air particles into the tube will produce air turbulences, which may result in an audible noise into your sound, you need to take care of the good side for the area of your port, but also of, of, of the edge um, of, of that port um, with which you can work on it uh, to minimize the turbulences. Just to, uh, do some, to, to say something also on the passive radiator side, um, a major point will be to uh, keep always a good ratio between the mass of the passive diaphragm and the compliance of this passive diaphragm, or even to pay attention to a good ratio um, of the compliance of this diaphragm over the compliance of the air particle into the box. Otherwise, you will not be able to achieve a flat alignment like uh, in the example um, shown on the bottom right, where the, the alignment is not flat at all. Let's continue now um, about um, challenges around microphones and microphone modules. Just a few words about fundamentals of MEMS microphone. At today, um, MEMS microphone over the market are all almost omnidirectionals. This means that they will feature only one sound port uh, for the sound uh, to get into. 
also due to their construction, due to the fact that the diaphragm is enclosed into a, a, a front volume, the typical frequency response for this, for this microphone uh, will feature a high frequency uh, resonance like we see on the example on the right. The first um, point to pay attention where you want to integrate uh, this kind of microphone is of course a good shape for the acoustic path. Uh, a general recommendation will always be um, a wide and short path. Uh, also, since in acoustics a horn shape is always better, you can rework your path a little bit to get this kind of shape and so uh, facilitate the wave uh, to get into the microphone. But also due to the fact that this path comes in extension to the front volume of the, of the MEMS, it will inherently modify the high frequency resonance like uh, illustrated on the example on the right. And you will so understand that if you want to keep this resonance out of your bandwidth of interest for your application, you need to uh, uh, carefully design the, the path uh, for your application. Since we know that the MEMS microphone can be really sensitive, uh, you will of course um, need to put uh, the correct protection, but sometimes a 2AV protection um, can modify the acoustic performance of your, of your microphone system, so take care of that. Once you integrated the microphone into your design, the, the best thing is to control that the acoustic performance is not so much modified because you want to deal with the performance of the original microphone. To control this, you can measure what we call the free field response of your system, of your prototyped system, using the so-called uh, dual microphone method. This method will involve one reference microphone, which you will activate in the first uh, step of the measurement to calibrate the sound coming out from uh, the loudspeaker. Once you did that, you will then be able to activate your prototype with the microphone in it to measure the acoustic performance and the frequency response and therefore validate uh, the overall integration. Finally, uh, if we talk about uh, microphone modules, we must talk about beamforming solutions, as they are by far uh, really popular over the market. And indeed, what the beamforming does is the fact that if you take MEMS microphone separately, you will always get an omnidirectional uh, directivity pattern, but once you put them together on a, on a PCB and you do some audio uh, operation on it, um, you will be able to get a strongly directive pattern uh, due to the fact that you will remove the signal from unwanted directions from the space and you will therefore be able to uh, strongly increase your acoustic SNR. But to finish and to say a few words about uh, challenges for uh, such a kind of design, such a kind of one-dimensional array, uh, the first uh, thing to, to, to do when you design this is to select the configuration you want to get uh, between the two most popular configurations over the market, which are um, the inferior configuration on the bottom left, and the broadside uh, configuration to the right of it. The main difference between these two configurations being the direction of the incoming wave to the network, and this will allow you to achieve different directivities according to what you target into your design. Of course, uh, you will need to status on the correct number of microphones, and you will need also to define the correct separating distance for doing this, um, you can take famous formulas from the literature and compute them in uh, routines from Excel software, MATLAB software, or any other equivalent uh, software solutions. 
and status on the correct number. This is by far still the theory point of view, but really, really fair enough uh, to define the parameters of your design. Well, okay, thank you, Frédéric. So here we went through, like I mentioned, uh, through the some some basics uh, on, on when you uh, need to integrate uh, drivers like speakers and microphones. Let's have a look of which kind of drivers uh, is available in acoustics in general. So here I yeah, will show you the standard portfolio. What we try to distinguish between the acoustic drivers are uh, between uh, uh, the several uh, that you see here on the screen. We start by micro-sized speaker. Micro-sized speaker, uh, we used to call those uh, the speakers that are usually used into uh, small devices, uh, portable devices, uh, products that uh, usually are uh, bringing sound into an arm length uh, distance or in a closed room. Uh, those drivers uh, are usually uh, rectangular, square-shaped, uh, and, and relatively small, like uh, the name says. Then you have the dynamic receivers. A uh, dynamic uh, receiver, it's, uh, it's a small speaker, basically, that have a tuned uh, response, frequency response, that fits to your ear. We have then the normal loudspeakers, uh, the, the classical, more classical one, something that uh, looks like uh, here, a classical speaker that you can see. Uh, then we have uh, microphones. Frederick told you about the MEMS microphone, but also another very standard technology is the ECM microphones. Then what we call the buzzers, if you only need one specific frequencies, uh, you don't want to use a full speaker full all over the bandwidth, you only need to put one signal from uh, alert uh, from this uh, very specific uh, application, then you need uh, to use a buzzer. Uh, or you can also have a, a need of uh, having ultrasound uh, application, in this case, it's also a buzzer, but the frequency will be concentrated around ultrasonic. All these drivers, like uh, Frederick mentioned, uh, need uh, to be integrated. So you will need some uh, additional uh, gasket, uh, cable enclosure boxes, uh, and you might want to have some uh, additional low frequencies. And like we saw just now, you want to add some bus effects of passive radiator. All these uh, CERTEC can offer you on the speaker size and the same on the microphone size, where you can have the need to put the microphone on the PCB, the MEMS, you need to do that. So if you want to do that, uh, um, you you will uh, have uh, to, to apply those microphones on the PCB. You also might need uh, some MEMS and gasket, uh, meshes and gasket to, uh, to be applied on your application, uh, or like Frederick just explained, microphone arrays uh, to, to make some beamforming. Again, also here, CERTEC can help you, can help you in designing those uh, together with you, or in making those. We can do the full subassembly for you. To do all that, uh, we have our acoustic engineering department, where Frederick is part of, uh, and which, which uh, you can uh, work together with them uh, and go through your application and find out what is the best driver, how to use it, make together the acoustic study of your application, make some simulation, and then finally have the best acoustic into your product. Let's have a look more in detail about all this range of drivers. Um, what we say, the micro size speaker and the receivers, they are very often rectangular shaped. Why this? If you see here the pictures of, for instance, this speaker, uh, very small, I hope you can see it. Well, those are rectangular shaped. Uh, why? Because we, when it goes out to such a small dimensions, you want to make sure that the membrane movement is uh, optimized and move the full air available on the space that you have. And this is why you have this membrane, which is really rectangular and covers the full size of the speaker, 
merely the full size of the speaker. This makes that you will get the most out of your space and you will get the best sound versus the size. This will allow you a very clear sound and small applications. Uh, if you want to have an idea of what is uh, the sound, you can just imagine the sound that you hear from the mobile phones. Usually the mobile phones use this kind of application. And a lot of technology is inside these kind of drivers. Um, we are talking about uh, very special now innovations with three, uh, with three up to five magnets uh, inside uh, such a speaker, uh, the, which offers you uh, possibility to produce voice, but also music. Um, many options are available on this. You have also waterproof uh, speakers for special applications. And uh, we have a lot to say on this. We might have a future webinar around those uh, small innovation, small uh, devices. And for the receivers, like uh, if you remember what I said, the receiver is the one that you use to on the year. Uh, and the receiver has a tuned frequency response that is tuned to fit exactly the volume of your ear. Uh, on the receiver, there are also some different options available. One of these uh, we mentioned here is, uh, for instance, the ring aid compatibility, where the receiver uh, has a special uh, coil that is uh, making a magnet field that is uh, taken over by the hearing aid to uh, let, uh, listen to the people, the unpaired people, be able to listen to what is going through the receiver. This is for the receiver. For the standard speaker, we have, uh, you can have a lot of uh, different types. Uh, you have small speakers, larger ones like the one I showed you before, like a more standard, or maybe also a flat speaker, a very flat one. The dimension, they go from the smallest, we can say about 13 millimeters, half an inch size, up to uh, 103 or 4 inches. Like I mentioned, flat rectangular uh, speaker, oval, uh, which is also called race track, uh, round or square. The round being the most popular for sure. Many different types of application. You can have voice centric speaker up to very wide band speakers. White waterproof for sure, and also the possibility to customize this kind of speaker to your specific application. Many options for connection, solder parts, tag, spring, connection, uh, connectors. Then also in front, don't forget to put a mesh. We can also help you uh, to define the best mesh. Uh, like uh, Frederick mentioned, the mesh will affect your frequency response, and it's good to choose the good one, the right one according to your needs, if you only need to protect from dust, if you want to protect from water, and all these kind of meshes affecting the acoustic uh, response, it's good to choose them uh, well, and we can help you on that. Double-sided adhesive to fix it, gasket. Not to forget uh, also, uh, if you took part of uh, webinars this week, uh, early this week, our friend from Knowles, Andy Bellavia, told uh, about the rising, uh, the increasing of uh, needs in HD sound. All the content that we have now available on HD is coming to the market. And so you want to make your product ready. And if you have a special need around that, you can come to us. We also have speakers to fulfill those requirements. Well, for the speakers, uh, let's have a look to the microphones. Um, again, like uh, Frederick mentioned before, the technology of MEMS is very popular, but still the ACM microphones is uh, widely used, and those uh, can go from a range of 2.5 millimeters up to 10 millimeters. There are different options, omnidirectional, unidirectional, bidirectional, in case of application like noise cancelling. A lot of options on connectivity, pins, soldering, wire, connectors, SND for free flowing. Uh, and this couldn't come with or without uh, the capacitor to cut the burst from the mobile phone. This was for microphones. And then we can move to the buzzers and ultrasonic buzzers. Here also the choice is quite wide. We have uh, starting from round 
four millimeter buzzer, very small to up to square 50 millimeters uh, buzzers, depending on the application, what sound level you want, where is the frequency need to be concentrated. Uh, then we can choose different type of uh, uh, buzzers, active or passive. Uh, there are technologies like piezo or magnetic buzzers. Also here, the connection possibility are different, pin soldering, SMD for reflow soldering. And those buzzer uh, comes also with the option to be on the ultrasonic. Uh, so the frequency response is um, shifted up to the ultrasonic world for specific application like object distance detection or distance measurement. Uh, those buzzer are used for that. This was just a quick review of the product range, which you can expect uh, into um, uh, drivers, acoustic drivers, and what we from Celtec can offer you. The range is very wide. We have a lot of uh, uh, possible possibilities and offering, uh, but it can come that uh, it can be the case that uh, we will not be able together to find the specific driver that fits to your application. It can be in terms of acoustics, it can be in terms of mechanics, electronics, but uh, it can be indeed that you, we don't find the specific one. And in these cases, we can introduce and, and create a new speaker, uh, either from scratch or from an existing one, and that uh, fulfill exactly your application. This is thanks to our uh, experience. I mentioned that before, but we are on the market since more than 30 years. So we learned how to um, address this. We have a team dedicated to that to create uh, the specific uh, product that will fit uh, perfectly to your needs. Um, also, thanks to all our experience and lab uh, and a powerful simulation with the acoustic team, uh, we will be able to design and, and specifically make uh, your product. How to do that? Uh, if we want to stay quite basic uh, on, let's say, on the acoustic side, because we also, we also can tune the speaker uh, mechanically, but on, if we stay on the acoustic side, there are a few parameters that we can play around uh, and you can see here uh, the surround, uh, which is uh, the, the suspension that you have around the membrane, the membrane itself, what we can call it a diaphragm, uh, the voice call, which is also an important parameter, and for sure the magnet if you want to have more uh, powerful uh, speaker with a larger uh, magnetic field that allows more more sound pressure level. These are just the ideas for uh, they all are combined uh, and the uh, the idea here is to show you that we can offer you a tuned uh, speaker to your need and this is based on the the, the, the experience that we have uh, and the idea behind at the end is to offer you the best possible acoustic driver for your application. That was about uh, Celtec, but uh, Celtec, as you know, uh, if you know us, uh, we are also partnering, uh, not only offering uh, acoustic drivers, as you have seen, but we also uh, offering, since we are on the market since 30 years, we are entered in partnership with uh, the leaders of the market, and we have a lot of partners we can offer. Um, among that, uh, for, uh, for instance, we can see the product from notes. Knowles, uh, you might know, it's uh, the inventor of the microphones, MEMS microphones. More than 20 years that they introduced the first uh, microphones, the first MEMS microphone, and they are still widely the leader on that uh, market. Uh, but Knowles is also the one that uh, invented the balanced armature uh, technology years ago uh, that uh, are widely used on the market today and that has also a wide offer on, on a lot of uh, specialty transducer, what we call specialty transducer, that um, address uh, a lot of applications. Um, Celtec is also known to bring you innovations and this is why we, a few years ago, we started our partnership with USound to introduce you the exciting and new uh, application with the, the MEMS speaker. You could learn probably this week, yesterday we had a webinar with our friends from USound. You can learn about this very interesting and nice technology about the MEMS speaker. 
if you have also special and specific um, needs on uh, uh, a specific acoustic signature because you want to have your product uh, really unique we have the products and the speakers from Tectonic that have the very unique technology of the BMR speaker. BMR speaker offers uh, uh, many advantages uh, among that uh, very nice half space directivity um, but we can have a lot of discussion around that if you have information we can give you more but they also have uh, exciters to uh, make any type of panels making them becoming a loudspeaker. This is without forgetting that for the hearing aid application, we can also offer the DSP from on semiconductors. So again, uh, 30 years of experience, uh, partnership uh, with the, the leaders of the market and the most innovative technology to bring you the best possible solution. And this, um, I would like to again remember you that we can provide you the full support not only the best drivers like we have seen until now but the best drivers into the application what we really think is important uh, is that you use the drivers in the best way so this is thanks to the team with frederick uh, and, and the team of the acoustic support because you will be able to use the product in the best way and we can also offer to uh, to take care of the integration, either helping you to integrate it or just taking care of it by customizing your sub assembly, acoustic sub assembly. Uh, we will, I think, have a specific webinar around this uh, in the next events, probably. So here is uh, what I wanted. Uh, we wanted today to introduce. Uh, if you have some questions, it's now time to type in. I will have a look at the interface. 